To get from one place to another, there is usually a best way to go. The ones who use the best way soon start a trail. In America, the first trails were made by animals. And then, Indians used the old animal trails and made more of their own. The first settlers who came to America followed the trails they found and opened still more trails themselves. When the settlers began to use wagons, trails turned into roads. <laughs> the early automobiles had a hard time on dirt roads in bad weather. And so the roads were paved that let drivers get around from place to place in town are called streets. Streets never really end. You can go from any street in America to any other street, in any other town. And cars are going somewhere on these streets, all the time, day and night. But what about people on foot? Well, people on foot still have trails. In town, these trails are usually paved and called sidewalks. But sidewalks do not go on and on. Most sidewalks have to stop when they come to a street. Ever since the old days, people on foot have learned that they have to look out for what is moving in the road or the street. If there isn't one there already, you have to imagine a stop sign wherever the street stops the sidewalk. You have to stop to be sure you don't try to use the street at the same time an automobile is using it. Drivers sometimes can't help but run into you if you are in the street at the wrong time. An official police car will show us how hard it is for a car to stop quickly and why a driver may hit you even though he doesn't want to. At only 25 miles an hour, a car is moving 37 feet each second or about twice the length of the car itself. The driver if he sees somebody starting to cross in front of him, takes almost a second before he can put his foot on the brake pedal. During this time, the car has already moved 30 feet. Now, after he has his foot on the brake, it is going to take at least 30 more feet to bring the car to a stop. So if the person on foot has stepped out while the car is less than 60 feet away, the car is going to hit him. And there isn't anything the driver can do about it. See? Here is where the car is when the person steps out. This is where the driver sees him. And here is where he puts his foot on the brake. And this is how far it is going to take for the car to stop. Now, what if the person who stepped out had been able to see this mark where the car was going to stop? He would never have stepped out, would he? So, when you don't know how far the car will take before it can stop, it's best to just let it go by. The police car had good brakes. And it took 30 feet to stop. Many cars do not have good brakes and take even longer to stop. You might think, well, even if the car can't stop, I can stop. I'm on foot. All I have to do is just stop. It takes longer than you think. A young person walking normally suddenly sees a car coming.
but it takes a second or so to see the car and decide what to do. Then he stops. Actually, it has taken six to eight feet to come to a stop. And running, it takes about 16 feet to stop. This is the reason why you should always walk across the street. And don't forget, everything depends on whether the driver can see you. Can this driver see this person about to cross the street? No. From where the driver is sitting, the corner post of the car makes a blind spot. Now there is one way to be sure you are not in a blind spot and that the driver can see you. If you can see his eyes, you can tell if he can see you. Along the street, you can often be in a blind spot as far as a driver is concerned. If you are behind a tree or a bush or if you are behind a parked car, you are in a blind spot. Many people are struck by cars when they suddenly appear from behind something in the middle of the block. The driver doesn't want to hit them, but it takes time to stop a car. Even if it is only going 25 miles an hour. And if it is going faster, it's going to take even longer to stop. The driver doesn't expect anyone to be trying to cross the street here. And it is always extra dangerous to try to cross anywhere but at a corner or a painted crosswalk. Remember, to get from one place to another, there is usually a best way to go. The best way to get from one side of the street to another is to go safely. This means at a corner or a crosswalk. It means if there is a traffic light, wait for a new green light. One that has just changed to green to give you time to look both ways, to be sure all cars have stopped. To give you time to look behind you, to see if there is a car coming down the cross street, a car that is going to turn at the corner. At any corner, the driver may start up again if he doesn't see you. If you can see the driver's eyes, you can tell whether he can see you. Trees, fences, and parked cars make blind spots but you don't run out in the middle of the block anyway. Because we have found out that you can't stop fast. And we've seen that it takes a driver a long ways to stop. And that he may hit you even though he doesn't want to. So you always cross at the corner. And you stop, because even the sidewalk stops when it comes to the street. When you always cross safely, you get into the habit of crossing safely, and it becomes easier to remember to do it. Because even though it seems you are safe at the stop sign, at the stoplight, in the crosswalks, you never take chances. You always use your eyes and ears. You always stop, look, and think. <laughs>